I had this idea. It took all the different turns that creative projects take. It was hard. And I finished it. I can do that again. Absolutely. Much better story. How often do you find people missing out on great opportunities that are right in front of them because they're focused on how things are supposed to be rather than on where they are and what's directly in front of them? I find that that happens in 63.27% of the time. No, I'm joking. (laughs) It happens a lot. It happens a lot because, you know, the thing about plans and what what people don't get about making plans is the point of planning is not the plan. It's the awareness that you generate from planning. And it helps you fundamentally planning helps you succeed. If along the way, there is an easier way to like get towards your success or opportunities that you could never have been aware of um, emerge because of the work that you're doing, take them. Change the plan. When reality changes, change the plan. Don't try to make reality fit the plan. That's a recipe for disaster. People have different degrees of being a control freak, right? And there's so there's some people who, like, when things look different than the way they thought it would look, can't let that go, right? They work themselves up. And there are other people on the other end of the perspective that never really had an intention about the way things were supposed to be. And they're just kind of like, eh, whatever. And I think there's somewhere in this middle ground here where showing up, having an idea for where you're going, doing the best that you can with the information that you have available while still being open that one, um, better ways of doing it might emerge while you're doing it. And two, that, you know, at the end of the day, none of us have an idea of what's going on. We're all making this up as we're, you know, we're all fixing this plane while flying it. And um, there's a grace in that. Once you accept that, that like. Right. In different religious and spiritual traditions have a notion of faith or this idea that, you know, God provides or providence cares or um, that things will work out the way they're supposed to be. So on and so forth. I think once we accept that um, the universe knows better than we do about Um, the way the world should be the way the way the world is going to manifest itself. And at the same time, play with that tension between knowing that the world knows, but also knowing that the world and universe needs us to do our part in making it be a certain way. Um, It gives a lot of grace. And there's, you know, I know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the narrative in my head. I'm like, it seems like I'm saying two things at once. It seems like I'm saying, that there's this big world out there that's going to show up the way that it shows up and that we need to do our part to make the world better and that they seem to be incompatible. Well, they, it's an apparent contradiction, right? It looks like be a contradiction, but it's actually not one is that we create, we as a, as a, um, as a race, we as sentient beings create new possibilities that none of us would ever be able to see because we don't know all the different players, including the Earth, including that random asteroid that's going around Pluto right now that has all sorts of crazy effects. We just don't have enough information about the totality of agents in the world to be able to say what the world is going to look like. Right. And we are one of those agents in the world. So we can influence the way the world is going to look like. Right. So, well, we are walking contradictions. I mean, every day, almost everything we do seems to have a, a possible contradiction with, you know, what we're doing from what we believe. And we're so quick to point out the hypocrisy in other people without looking at frequently the hypocrisy in our own lives or what we're doing. Or, or I mean, I struggle with processes all the time Uh, as a process guy. I mean, you're, it seems that you're constantly working with people to help them with processes. And this show was founded on my fascination with processes, but at the same time, I also uh, struggle with them constantly. And, you know, as I talk with other creative people, it seems to be that they consider systems to be anathema to their being and they said, we have no processes, we have no systems, because that stifles our creativity. But I find that having systems, in, in fact, enhance mm-hmm. creativity as long as 
again, the contradiction, they don't shut it down to get into routines that become ruts. What are some of your thoughts around the value of systems? What are some of the more important considerations, you know, in setting up systems and thought to people shipping the work and allowing those systems to enhance their creativity and meaningful work? Mm -hmm. Because it's easy to, again, it's easy for me to focus on doing the hard things. And at times, the easy way would have taken it just as well. Uh, you know, so again, what, what systems and how to make them uh, thoughtful and intentional without getting in our way? Does that, does that make sense? It does make sense. Um, before I go down to tactics and methods, I want to talk about mindset real quick, though. Um, That's where it starts. Yeah. It's not that those people who are really resistant to processes and systems don't have them. Um, they do. They're just not articulated. Um, and the resistance I've, I've experienced is against bad processes and systems, not good ones. And I think it's, it's a really, really lazy creative mind right. that will resist something without exploring how, how that might benefit them. It's a really, and I know that sounds very normative, but I get so frustrated with this because people are like, oh, well, I tried that one process and I tried this other process that, and neither one of them works. So all processes are bad. And I'm like, really? That's how we make judgments about the world. We have two instances that are bad and we assume that everything is bad. Like, you know, there's a lot of isms that are based upon that type of thinking. The reality is... Well, I think of dating. Yeah. Went on two bad dates and so everybody is bad. Yeah. I won't date. Yeah. I mean, we would not think about that way or we would not think that way um, about a lot of different things. But when it comes to processes and systems, people can be so rigid. Same thing with planning. Right. I've tried this method of training, planning. I've tried that method of planning. My plans never work out. So what's the point of making plans? Really? That's a, that's that's the approach. Um, so what I would say is think about it this way. Structure thrive or creativity thrives in structure. It just does. If you can think about it in the sense of um, creativity just being like water and it adapts to whatever you put it in. And if you just have some water in a pitcher and you pour it on the table, it just goes all over the place. It's not useful unless you're wanting to spill water all over the place. Um, but if you pour that water in a cup, it has use. You can do things with it. You can channel that creativity, i.e. water, into something purposeful. So the goal is not to resist systems and structures and processes, but to find the ones that best channel and harness your creativity as opposed to stifle it. So – that's something to think about there. Everybody has a process. Everybody wakes up in the morning and um, does certain things before they do other things, right? Um, we are naturally, as humans, hardwired to thrive in structure. Um, and we're naturally, as humans, given that we're creative, like creative people, we actually thrive with having sources of creativity that's outside of that structure. We're strange creatures. We're very, very strange creatures. So... Um, that being said, I think one thing to, to be looking for is finding your right way of goal setting. And that could be looking at how you talk about fin just finishing your work. That could be talking about how you finish your work and get it into the marketplace. That could be about, how, you know, how you finish your work, get it into the marketplace and what you expect to happen and what gets there. There are different levels of goal setting, but it's really challenging to start a creative process and have no idea like what the end goal is going to be. It could be flexible. For instance, you could be a writer and think that you're writing a novel and end up recognizing that you've got a novella on your hands. That's okay, right? Change the plan as you go, but you at least started that this was going to be some type of story that was going to have, um, that was going to go, you know, certain types of ways, right? So that's one way to think about it. So goal setting I've learned is really important but it's goal setting that works for you. And my way may not work for Charles. Charles's way may not work for somebody else. But knowing where you're going with this precious time that you have, it's really, really important. Um, another piece I think that's underplayed is finding those yaysayers around you, finding those people who support your work and believe in your work and creating your work for them. 
to them, uh, you know, for them, talking to them, um, interacting with them and keeping as much as you can focused on them as opposed to that one in 100 troll or hater that's out there. Right. Um, we have a, ne- we have a negativity bias, right? So, you know, a thousand people can love something that you can do and one person can just be that, mm, that person that just comes and they have to tell you how terrible your work is and why you're a bad person and probably should go eat worms. Who are we going to And they think that's being helpful. And they think that's being helpful or they don't think it's being helpful. They just like the head games that they can play with people, right? Right. It doesn't matter. Fundamentally, someone that, that is that caustic and bitter, you have to understand whatever they're going through is not really about you. It's not about your art. It's not about your work. It's about their own story and their own journey. And if you take too much of that on, it gets cancerous and toxic. But we have this. Yeah, the narrative. Yeah, go ahead. You know, so the narrative going in on the narrative that goes on in our own heads is something we don't recognize. And when that gets imposed on other people, that conflict is something that generally doesn't look pretty. We don't stop and look at it as individual narratives and recognize how much that gets in the way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and there's always even when I had sort of I mentioned earlier, I had really, really hateful um, comment come up. Like one of those really – like they said words that like I haven't said in a long time or haven't had said to me in a long time, right? I was like, ooh, this one's really prickly. Ouch. Um, so I thought about it a little bit. I was like, what – is there any truth in there? Is there something to learn from this comment? Is there something to like what's, what's my response to this that's not necessarily accepting the totality of that story or the energy of that story, but looking at it and saying, what can I learn from that? And it turned out that there was minimal value in this one. So I just deleted it and moved the hell on, right? Um, That person needed a punching bag. I didn't feel like being a punching bag. So he can go find somebody else, right? Um, Don't don't need to be you. (laughs) Doesn't need to be me. Um, Bless him, but doesn't need to be me. Um, But the thing is, we have this negativity bias, right? So those thousand people who love what we do, I don't know why, why this is Charles. I don't know why we tell ourselves, oh, they're just being nice to us or they're just our friends or they just like me. Right? We make up all these stories about why these people who love our work really don't. But yet this one troll comes up and says something and they have the testament. It's true. Absolutely true. They are right. Um, instead, how about we just assume that either all the stories are true And you've got a thousand more stories about your work that have a lot more weight. Or maybe we can assume that maybe that person was just having a bad day. And because people have bad days and they do shitty things sometimes. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So finding those yaysayers and making your work in that community of people, sending your work to people who are already excited to hear about it. Um. Doing work with people who you know have your back and won't let you fail. Um, You know, I've I've said a lot of stuff, but as far as process and habits go, if you could take away one thing, I would do that more so than anything else. Because, you know, Aristotle rightly pointed out that that man, or I would say it this way, human beings are political creatures. Now, what he meant by that is that we are people who live in groups. Absolutely. Um, We are social creatures. Might be an easier way to understand it. We thrive in groups. Most of us, even the most introverted of us, do not thrive all by ourselves. We need to at least know that we're part of something. We at least need to know. We need community. Yeah, we need community. So the thing about it is, Charles, the thing that we have the most control over in this world is the community that we're in or are are the communities that we're in. You can get on Skype. You can go to Meetup. You can um, do all sorts of things in this beautiful world with technology. That is the thing we have the most control over. You don't have control over what genes you were born with. You don't have much control over what social station you were born in. You don't have much control over where you were born and the historical, you know, um, the historical ways in which that impacts you. But you do have the ability to choose to be in relationships with people who um, support the best parts of you. That doesn't mean that they just like nod every time you say something, but they're really looking out for your best interest. They love you and they are here to help you be your best self in the world. We get to choose that. And it can be hard because in different seasons of our life, 
we sometimes have to let some people go and we have to bring some other new people in. People are with us for seasons. The big season is long. 